Hello, everybody. Welcome to our webinar, what is coming in Idea Statica 20.1. Uh, my name is Martin and let me also introduce you my colleagues Petra and Ryan who will show us new features and improvements which are coming with the latest idea Statica. Hi Petra, how are you? Hello everybody. And Ryan, what about you? Hi everyone, very well, thank you. Great. Before uh, we start, let's check your settings. Uh, we are using GoToWebinar and because there is a quite a crowd here, we put everybody to listen-only mode. All you can see on the right side, uh, the ribbon to set up your audio and to type uh, in questions. We will be answering them continuously and also at the end of the webinar. So let's check what we have prepared for you today. Uh, first, I will briefly go through the highlights of the version. Then uh, Ryan and Petra will show us uh, new stuff in the steel and concrete. And finally, uh, we will also talk about uh, some improvements in licensing. So what you can be looking for in the version 20.1? First, uh, in steel, we edit estimation of the fabrication cost. We can automate uh, the first input of manufacturing operations bar pre-design. There are also some improvements in the wizard for the first input of the connection. And we can also import a group of uh, connections at once. Then we put a lot of uh, effort into the development in concrete. And now we are uh, releasing a new application, concrete member. It's a beta version. Everybody with a concrete license can test it. And I would like to say that this is my favorite highlight because as you will see, it moves our concrete design to the next level. We also have some improvements in partially load areas and fatigue check. And finally, as I mentioned, I will show you improved sign in dialogue which enables automatic sign out to speed up the license transfer. Now let's start with the steel. So Ryan, can you show us what's new in steel? Cool. Right, can we all see my screen? Yes. Yes, cool. So as Martin mentioned, I'll be going through the new features for version 20.1 in steel. So as he, as he also mentioned, highlights being the cost estimation, pre-design feature and the bulk import from the code check manager. And I'll go through each of these in more detail, starting with the cost estimation. So this essentially provides users with a rough price for connection in the 3D model view and considers various components on a cost per weight basis in the settings. So cost can currently be defined for four components. So that's the steel parts, including the plates and any added stiffening members, and that's also grade dependent. Welds, bolts, again, grade dependent, but it's also depending on the diameter of bolts that you're using. And then hole drilling, which is considered as a percentage of the bolt assembly cost. Ah, you can't hear me. Ah, all right, can everyone hear me now? How much of that did we hear? Yeah, we, still, we, we still can hear you. It's, it's okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Did we catch all of that that I mentioned? Yeah. Okay. I'll I'll just go through this then in Idea Statica Steel, just so we can see what that looks like in real terms. So here we have a detail that's been used on a real life project so this is a preliminary design on uh, the Heathrow airport extension so the fabricator used this as a standard detail across the project so let me just refresh the production cost as you can see this is in the top right corner just as we make changes to this it changes in real time so as you can see every edit that we do so if we want to edit 
this stiffening plate, for example, from 10 mil thickness to 12 mil, that changes, so it adds six euros here to the production cost. So all of these default values may not be representative of your market. So anyone using this tool, we would heavily recommend you adjust these numbers in the settings. So we can do this from here. And I'll go through all of the settings now. So firstly, we can turn on and off this feature simply by checking and unchecking the, the tick box. We can change the currency that we're using. So for the UK market, which would be most prevalent for me, I'll change this to pounds. And then we can go through each of the different components individually. So we have for all unspecified steel grades at the moment, on default, it's two pound per kilo. But depending on what you have access to, you might want to change this. And if we wanted to change this based off of an S355, for example, we can change this to two pound 40, let's say. And we can do the same procedure for welds, bolt assemblies. So this can be changed again by grade and by diameter as such. And then hole drilling, as I mentioned, is given as a percentage of the overall bolt assembly price. So as a default, that's set at 30%. And we can save all these changes in our templates and set that as default. So as I mentioned, this is from a real life project. What I'm showing you now was a preliminary design. And once they started using Idea Statica, just for the purpose of showing you how powerful the, the optimization tool is, you can see now that the production cost massively changes. As I'm aware that they reduced the, the weight by 77% and this is reflected in the uh, production cost. So it's really nice to be able to see that in real time. We can also see this broken down in the report. Now by default, this isn't shown in the report, but if you see in the settings, can you, can you hear me? So I'm just being told that I can't be heard. Yeah, can we still me? can hear Yeah, oh, we okay. can still hear it. It's okay. Okay. Right. Yeah, so you can't, can't see this in default settings, but if you just click this button, you'll be able to see it. So we can scroll through the settings and you'll find the cost estimation section and it'll give you a breakdown of each component and give the weight and the cost for each component and then give you an overall summary as we go through. Next thing I want to show you would be the pre-design feature. So this is a new feature to essentially provide a sensible starting point for users and shorten the time designing a connection by giving you a head start through your design. So generally intended for I-shaped cross sections and the most common manufacturing operations being fin plates, splices, various end plate operations and welds. So how this works is by reading parameters entered into the properties table of the given operation and creates a suggested initial design based off of those inputs. So what we would use as the basis of the pre-design to so your inputs would be the material and geometrical data of the connected members, the bolt assembly uh, and the weld data. Your outputs are going to be the plate thickness, the weld sizes, and then the number and the layout of bolts. So the resulting design is roughly based on the resistance of the connected cross sections or plates. So again, let's demonstrate this through the software and also take this opportunity to show you some slight changes to the um, opening wizard. So in the topology section now we've now grouped these first based off of open sections, so we've got our I and L shapes, and then we move on to our uh, rectangular or square hollow sections, and then down to the circular hollow sections. Then in the design area, the, these are grouped based off their expected behavior of the connection, starting with the moment connections, down to the shear connections, truss connections, and then the, the blank connections.
So for this example of the pre-design, I'll show you a splice connection from scratch, or at least from the, the splice template. And I'll show you how much quicker this process can be. And we'll just wait while this loads. Okay, so first what we want to do is to change our members. So let's use something a little bit bigger. Let's see a UC 305 by 305. And again, okay, so as I mentioned before, the pre-design is based off of the design resistance of the members. So by default, this is set at 40%, uh, but for a splice connection, we're likely to want this to be as high as possible. And we can change this in the settings. Again, so as you can see, this is a default 40%. But yeah, because this is a splice connection, we want to, to have that um, value as, as high as possible because we want to continue, allow continuation of forces between the members. But I'll also show you the other settings that we can change. So we can change the preferred dimensions from metric to, uh, from imperial to metric, the rounded increments that the pre design is doing, end distances of the bolt assemblies and other parameters and different uh, settings based on the operations. So let's just open up the metric default, uh, sorry, template and change the beam percentage to 80. Okay. And I'll take this opportunity also to show you the uh, a new minor feature where we can input loads as a percentage. So essentially for some markets, this can be a really useful tool where detailers are given instruction to design connections potentially where they are um, at least as strong as the members themselves or at least a fraction of that. So we can click on this loads percentage button and input the loads based on that. So for our axial load, we can put in 45%. For our vertical shear, minus 10. And then our moment in the y direction, we can put in 35. And now to use the pre-design feature, just need to right click on the operations, select pre-design all. And so what it's done is looked at all those input uh, parameters and built with design based on that. I can see you can see how quickly that's come up with uh, a bolt arrangement that looks as though it could be working. And we can see whether this works by calculating here. Now, generally this feature isn't supposed to be used as a complete design. This is just a, a starting tool essentially to allow you to optimize from there. Now, anybody who's designed spice connections in the past will know how long it can take to to sort out all of the bolt arrangements as such. So as you can see, we've got a working solution, fairly good optimization of, or utilization of the top flange, although the web itself is not massively utilized, so potentially we could optimize that further. Let's take a look at the beam percentage and let's change that for the web, we could change that to 50. So if I simply right click the web plate and pre-design that, it's reduced that. And then we can calculate that again and see if this is better utilized and a more optimized tool. Hopefully you can see how few adjustments this is taking 
to optimize this. There we go. So heavily utilized flange plate, top flange plate, and the web is better utilized. Okay. So that's the pre-design feature. And then the last thing I want to show you is the BIM workflow updates. So now we have access to uh, bulk import from our global modeling software. So we can do that from Tecla structures as an example. I'll show you now. So here we've got a steel frame structure. And if we want to bulk export, simply open up our code check manager as normal. So previously you'd have to do one connection at a time, but if we wanted to import all of these at once, we wouldn't have a problem. So simply press bulk select. And if we wanted to import all of these connections associated with B4, so the splice connection of the column and all of the horizontal connections from there, could simply go to a bird's eye view, middle click to confirm the selection, and it should load those up. Now it'll ask us if we want to import recommended worlds. So this is a new feature that essentially tries to detect whether there, there are any contacts between two steel components that should be welded where they aren't. So if we click yes, and we'll be able to see in the model whether there have been any uh, imported welds. Let's just see while this loads. Okay. So you can also see from this menu which connection you're selecting from Tecla because it's highlighted here as I shift through each of these. So let's open up connection six. And I can also show you from there the recommended world feature. Okay, so it seems as though all the welds were imported as normal, but let's say they weren't and a number of these welds didn't get imported. It would be able to detect if we right click on the operations, check missing welds, and it's able to locate a number of plates that are connected but are not welded. We can just simply select all of these and weld those plates. And then they'll come up at the bottom as missing weld operations. So that's the bulk selection. And then just to recap all that we've seen for the steel improvements. So we've had a look at the cost estimation, the pre-design feature, the percentage load uh, input, the bulk import of connections, check for missing welds. And there's two improvements that I've not demonstrated, but were improved in the latest version, which is the bulk distances, which have a new algorithm for the Eurocode bearing check and an improved model of contact between plates. So that's everything in steel. I'll pass this over to Petra now for concrete. Thank you, Ryan, for a nice presentation about news in the steel. Uh, now let me share my screen. I hope you can see it. Uh, before we go to uh, news in concrete, uh, let me mention the BIM links between Idea Statica and um, Idiosatica connection and third-party softwares. So here you can see the 
updated list of supported versions of the applications. And now we're coming to concrete. So I'm happy to present what is new in Idea Statica Concrete. So what uh, does Idea Statica Concrete do today? Uh, we provide complete code checks. We perform several advanced analysis types. Uh, we are not limited in topology or shape of cross section. And of course, their reinforcement layout. So we can um, analyze any cross section, any uh, 2D concrete details, especially walls and beams. And uh, what is uh, the most important for the structure engineer to do the reports about their calculation and uh, analysis. So reports that get the project done are also available in Idea Statica Concrete. On the other hand, there are some uh, weaknesses um, in um, sometimes the um, uh, all the data uh, might be uh, or getting the data into software might be complicated for the users. Uh, from time to time, uh, the user is forced to go from one app to another. And since the concrete applications are one of the the oldest ones which were developed by the idea statica team we can meet a bit um, older ui or let's say that the ui is not the newest that is why we bring new application idea statica member which will uh, remove the weaknesses uh, step by step so uh, when we talk about uh, reinforced concrete design, uh, we work in um, Idea Static Concrete member. And uh, this application will unify all the design and code checks of all reinforced concrete members in one place, a new environment, and also integrate it into your FIA softwares. Those of you who work in uh, steel applications of Idea Statica, you probably know Idea Statica member. Uh, we can run this application from Idea Statica homepage by the button member. And as I said um, earlier, when we deal with concrete, uh, it is Idea Statica concrete member and it is released as beta version. As it was mentioned at the beginning, whoever uh, uh, purchase uh, any type of concrete license will have available this beta version. Now I would like to show you uh, two short uh, examples in which we will focus on design and code check of a frame, reinforced concrete beam. And um, then I would like to show you um, complicated reinforcement in a balcony beam. So I will switch to Idea Statica, run uh, the member, and create a new project. So I'm clicking New. The project will be saved in this uh, folder. The name will be, for example, frame three, uh, concrete grade C2530. We can, of course, change the class by this button. Let's uh, work with the template. So, as I said, uh, I will analyzed uh, reinforced concrete frame. So that would be the first uh, option. Uh, I will change the span. It will be 10 meters. But as you can see in this window, we have still a steel member. So how to change it? Simply by assigning to the beam the right cross section. 
So I will click on this arrow button and uh, now there are available not only the steel uh, sections, but also the concrete ones. So I will choose from the advanced cross sections, this T section. Here the user can define the dimensions. So for example, let's have a 700 meters height T section. Of course, here you can define the concrete material again. I will confirm OK. Now you can see that we uh, change the steel member to concrete one and I push the create project button and in a second uh, I can um, play uh, in the new application concrete uh, member. So as you can see, here is our analyzed member T section. And there are some um, so-called related members, RM1 to RM4. These members substitute the missing part of the structure. So let's imagine that we have a, a reinforced concrete hole and we decided to analyze only this critical member. These related members uh, can be uh, uh, edited by clicking on them. And here we can play with the geometry with the supports on their ends. I can also uh, delete them if I don't need them. So for example, let's delete uh, RM3 and RM4. By uh, deleting them, um, I'll switch to transparent view. Uh, the boundary condition or support uh, was automatically applied uh, at this end. Since this beam has two um, nodes, uh, one and two, we can click under connection to cone two and uh, see the settings of this support. So if this support support would be um, fixed only in the Z direction, I can simply change it like that. So this is about geometry. Let's suppose that this is the final geometry of our structural model. Let's move to second part and that would be uh, load FX loads. We have used a template. So here is first, um, let's say combination, LE1. What we have here, we distinguish between loading of analyzed members and related members. Analyzed members are always uh, subjected to line loads in the direction of the axis X, Y, Z. In this case, we have 30 kilonewtons per meter on this uh, beam. We can also uh, add by this plus button another effect. Uh, for example, in the direction of Y axis, you can see that it is visible here in the scene and it doesn't have to act on the whole length of the beam, but uh, we can say that it is, uh, the load is from two to, uh, five uh, meters long and it means that it is uh, it, it it acts only on this part similarly we could model um, concentrated loads uh, as uh, distributed loads on a very small uh, distance for example half meter Then we have these end forces on related members in this button. So as I said at the beginning, uh, if we have a global model, we perform the global analysis and we know all the results, all the internal forces in each members. And these end forces could be input here in this, into this table. And these uh, nodal forces uh, would uh, substitute the missing part of the structure. The last thing uh, is to set in the properties the check type. 
So here you can see that it is undefined. So let's choose ULS. And that would mean that we have assigned these uh, values to combination for assessing the ultimate limit state. So these values are actually the design values. Um, how to define another combination? So let's go to the ribbon and click on this load button. We input another load effect. Uh, check type would be, for example, SLS for characteristic combination. And similarly, we would um, define the values, for example, 25 kilonewtons per meters. So in this way, uh, we would continue and uh, define all the combinations which need to be analyzed. In the next step, uh, I will show you how to design the reinforcement in such a beam. So I will click on the analyzed member and click on this rebar button. Those of you who use this um, uh, idea statica concrete probably met this dialogue it's called reinforcement editor and here we can design the reinforcement set the cover design the shape of stirrups and number of longitudinal uh, bars to speed up the whole process i will use the template and uh, define uh, the numbers and uh, positions of the bars. So let's have six uh, pieces of the bar uh, at this uh, upper upper edge and three longitudinal bars at the lower edge. Uh, this is the diameter of the stirrup and uh, let's have a 200 millimeters distancing of the stirrup. I will click OK. And you can see how fast it was, how fast we could um, design the reinforcement for this beam. Of course, I can modify, uh, for example, the distancing of the stirrups. So I will change to front view, um, find the stirrup group, click on it, and here at this row, uh, I can change the this description. So, for example, let's have a 10 uh, stirrups distance by 100 millimeter, and then uh, 200, and then again at the other hand, at the other side of the beam, the same dimension. It will be symmetrical, and I will copy this and do the same for the second group of the stirrup. And you can look at it, how it is danced at the surrounding of the support and 200 millimeters is uh, the distance at the rest of the beam. I will click to 3D view. And this is how uh, we can play with the various distancing of the stirrups. If I need to change, for example, diameter of the longitudinal um, of the longitudinal bar, I go to reinforcement, right click, I run the reinforcement editor, and here, for example, I will change the diameters from 20 to 18 millimeters. So we have a model uh, loaded and reinforced uh, concrete beam. So we can proceed to check tab here at the ribbon. So I will click calculate, linear analysis is running and we got the results in terms of internal forces. Right now, we are looking at the distribution of bending moments. Um, if, we need, uh, if, we need, if we need to know shear forces, I will choose shear forces or normal forces. On the analyzed 
or related members. The last thing to do is to code check this beam. So there is this button section check. I clicked on it and uh, Idea Statica RCS has opened. Uh, this application automatically chose the most utilized section and uh, checked them. And this is uh, probably uh, for most of you uh, quite known environment. Uh, so we have a section, uh, extremes, and by clicking on results, we can check uh, the we can check the detailed results uh, bending check shear check or stress limitation so both um, ULS and SLS checks are uh, available in this application so I will close RCS application and uh, we uh, model, um, design, and code check this beam. So uh, let me go to um, or switch to another project that would be uh, the balcony beam. So I will save the changes in the first project and um, um, show you the maybe a more interesting one where we can focus on the reinforcement only. So this is uh, our complicated uh, geometry of the beam. Uh, you can see that there are columns and other beams. Uh, each beam is from different section. It is loaded and let's uh look at this reinforcement of this beam so i will switch from solid to transparent view and i will play a bit with this reinforcement layout so as you can see that's uh, the stirrups are even more complicated than uh, in the previous example. Uh, check out the, the description or the notation for for such a complicated uh, distancing of the stirrups. And now uh, let's focus on the. lower uh, reinforcing bars of this section. So right now, I will switch on all the bars. So right now, it means that we have this uh, reinforcement layout for the whole beam. So uh, six reinforcing bars at the at the bottom edge. What if I need to um, define that uh, um, there are some bars which are not uh, anchored at the support? That there are some bars which uh, are only at the mid span. How to do it? So we will do it by means of reinforcement zones. So I will add another two zones. And user can choose if he or she wants to use relative um, dimensions or the absolute ones. So I will choose the absolute and I will divide the, this beam to three parts. For, so from zero to three, from three to, uh, or let's say from 
0 to 22 meters, 2 to 4, and 4 to 6. So here you can see the dimensions. And I will uh, click on the first row and specify that these two bars won't be in this zone. So and I will do the same for this part. So look at the scene here and I will click on these two reinforcing bars and that's how they disappear. So you can check that we have some additional reinforcing bars only in the uh, surrounding at, uh, at the mid span. So this is the way how we can consider uh, non-continuous uh, reinforcing bars uh, in the reinforced concrete structures. And we can proceed to check, do the analysis and um, look at the, the internal forces. So that would be all for the practical part. Uh, so I will switch to the presentation. Uh, you can look forward to, um, uh, the, to our next webinars where we will, where we will certainly um, focus uh, more deeply into in uh, a concrete member. So let me go through the minor improvements in Idea Statica Concrete. Uh, in Fatigue Check, we improved the stress strain diagrams. So from version 20.1, um, the linear stress strain diagram is applied. Uh, so uh, now it is in compliance in Eurocode. Uh, so the concrete intention is not considered and only the linear behavior between uh, Train and stress is uh, considered. In the previous version, release 20, zero, uh, we have introduced partially loaded areas. Now, in this uh, 20.1 version, we uh, improve the definition of reinforcement layout so user can define the reinforcement uh, more efficiently and in a fastest way. And as the last, uh, again, the list of the BIM links between Idea Statica Concrete and other applications. So here you can check the supported version uh, of the BIM links. So, so I believe that this is the end of my part and I will uh, take the presenter to Martin. Thank you, Petra, for a really detailed uh, demonstration of a concrete member. It looks really promising and I'm all looking forward for the first feedbacks from, from our customers. Now uh, let's continue with uh, the licensing. Uh, so I have prepared for you the explanation what we have prepared for you uh, in the improvement of the sign-in dialogue. So as you can see, we have added here a new uh, option, keep me signed in, which can really speed up uh, the login into Idea Statica. If you keep this, keep this, uh, keep me signed in checked, Idea Statica behaves as in the version 20.0. That means that after the closing of uh, the application, uh, the license stays on your computer for usually standard is uh, 72 hours uh, and you don't need to be connected to the internet. If you, if you let this uh, checkbox empty, the license seat uh, is returned to the license pool on the server immediately after you close uh, Idea Statica and there is no offline window uh, activated and that means that 
the other users in your organization can get your license immediately. Yeah, so that's about this. As you see, we have added here also the link for the forgot password. So you can really find it easily from the side in the dialog as well. What is another good news that uh, we have uh, speed up uh, the idea statica start uh, approximately about 30% faster thanks to the optimization of the communication bet uh, between uh, the application and the server. And we have also improved the, the warning messages which are coming from the licensing. So that's all about the licensing. And now let's uh, check the questions you send us. I have uh, just picked, uh, let's say, two of them and uh, the rest we answered uh, uh, directly by the, by, the, by the chat. So first one is about the steel and so for the Ryan and one of our user asked uh, whether the pre-design takes into the account uh, detailing rules. So okay. Ryan, can you explain us? Sure. Yeah. No, the um, pre-design doesn't take the detailing rules into account, uh, mm -hmm. but the user can activate the detailing check in the settings, and detailing will be part of the standard checks from there. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Okay. Thank you, Ryan. And the second one uh, is about the concrete member, and uh, our users would like to know uh, which uh, next checks and analysis will be implemented. Uh, so what's the, what is the roadmap of our development, Petra? Um, I might take the presenter because I would like to <clears throat> uh, sure. demonstrate it. So let me switch. Oh, oh not this one. <laughs> uh, Yes. So if you go to, I hope you can see the my screen. So if we go to our website, ideastatica.com and go to support center and release notes, release notes about concrete. You can uh, read more details about our news and uh, under the section uh, analysis, uh, we um, explain uh, what we are um, developing or uh, implementing in concrete member. So actually, uh, there will be four uh, four types of analysis available. So the first one is linear analysis. You have seen this. The second one is geometrically and materially non-linear analysis, including term analysis. So this should be uh, this. Uh, I think it's uh, nearly developed, and we are um, working on implementing of uh, this analysis to idea statica concrete. Uh, then we have a third type of analysis, compatible stress fill method for 2D. Uh, so actually this is this analysis is available in a standalone application Idea Statica Detail. And currently we are uh, working on some improvements and will implement it soon in a concrete member. And the last, the most uh, difficult, uh, the, the highest um, challenge for us is the compatible stress fill method for 3D, where a uh, user will analyze uh, general, uh, general concrete details. Uh, they can apply general load. And uh, so uh, this uh, will, this analysis or the, it is in uh, the development and in the future we will implement it in concrete member so i hope it was uh, sufficient such uh, answer and i mm -hmm. recommend to go through the um, release notes okay thank you petra very much Okay. 
so uh, I see that there are still some questions coming, so don't worry. Uh, we will answer them um, maybe at the end of the webinar. If not, we will send the answer by the email. Okay, so that's, uh, that, let's, that we are at the end of the webinar. Uh, I would like to ask you if after the webinar to check our support center where you can find the download link to the to the new version, also the full the documents with the release notes uh, as you saw uh, in a Petra Petra demonstration or explanation of the uh, of the question. We will also put the recording of, uh, the, of this webinar to our support center and also on our YouTube channel. If you are not uh, the, our user yet, don't hesitate to uh, ask for the trial version on our website. And uh, I would like to also mention the webinars which are coming. So first of them is on the 21st of October when we will uh, really um, detailly explain, explain uh, our new concrete member uh, with uh, another examples. So there is a special webinar for, for this new application. And also uh, don't forget on uh, the webinar of our Connection Wednesdays uh, on, in November, we will uh, demonstrate the case study from uh, the Kiernan Steel Company, and it's really quite really interesting uh, connections as you see on, on, on the screenshots. So that's all for today. Thank you very much for your attention, and we are looking forward uh, to see you uh, at, on the on next time. Goodbye. Have a nice day. Bye bye.